consistently and consistent. So Rabbi Shapiro, he likes sparring with me. Because okay. I'm a lawyer, I guess. So he says, he says in the shear the other day, you weren't, he says, I know a lot of lawyer jokes. I said, I know rabbi jokes. coming from uh, far and wide. Everyone has their own drive, their own experience of how they get here. So uh, thank you for everybody for coming. Are we on the air? Perfect. mix up Pesa products with similar looking Hummings products. Oh, yeah. This happens in the store and when ordering online. Check all of It's a very daunting experience. And there easy, easily could be a time where somebody overlooks. They, go, they assume when they go to a nice Haimashakosha store, they're not shopping just in Publix or Winn-Dixie, 
they're shopping in a Heidish Jewish environment. They assume everything is kosher pesa, especially you have this in New York more, where they have entire supermarkets just kosher lepesa. You would assume everything you're getting is kosher lepesa. You don't think twice. The same way in New York stores, we have a big kosher store. They assume everything in the store is kosher. Is it being sold there? Now there are some stores that have a hashkacha on the store. I think the Vaden Queens or some stores. Yeah. Everything being sold like that. Everything here. Everything here Everything. like that. The, the, the watchword that we teach every mashkiach and anybody who ever asks is ne- don't use the A word. Never assume. Right. Okay. Kashrus 101. Never assume. Yes. What's the A word? Assume. <laughs> oh, assume. Yeah. But this story. <laughs> this story definitely repeats itself time after time, year after year, that people buy products in a kosher store assuming they're kosher based on they're not. And you know what? I'll tell you a story that happened in my family. Uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, we were in uh, Eretz Yisrael for Pesach. My mother-in-law went to the local Makolet, Sanhedrin Merchevet, very from Haredi neighborhood. She went to the Makolet and bought a package of hot dogs. So, ballpark right, it wasn't ballpark France, it wasn't Hebrew National, a package Israeli hot dogs. Right before she goes to cook it, she notices that it doesn't say on the kosher Pesach. Strange. No, maybe it's just didn't print it. So she sent me to the Rav of the Shuna to ask about it. So, of course, what does he tell me? It's a problem. Absolutely a problem. Yeah. Right? It was not kosher Pesach. Hot dogs, they have fillers and things they mix right. in. Yeah. Right? It can be mixed in chametz. So, yeah, you can't eat it. For sure, this is a problem. And I said to him, but what do you mean? I bought this in... A store right over here by the Badats, Haredi store in Yerushalayim. How could this happen? So, this tough, seasoned Israeli Rav looks at me. It's a kushya. It's not a question. He says, the Shana Shavra, he mokrim beer by Pesach. Last year they were selling beer on Pesach. Regular, now, not Pesach. Right. In general, you know, Conscious scenarios to show might be a different story. It's the Wild West. It's and, it, you know, rabbi, there's lots of crazy things that go on. Told us that kosher in Israel is much harder than it is here. Correct. Yeah. Kosher scenarios to show with its own barsha, and especially a year, you know, shvita, very tricky. But these things happen. People buy products, assuming it's kosher to Pesach, and unfortunately it's not. And it all takes for a store is and what's the difference between a Pesach Thicker product and a regular product? One little pee on it, it's so, if you're not, you know, take off your glasses, you squint and you can maybe see it. It's the same label as the rest of the year. And all it takes is for one, you know, could be a Mexican employee that's doing the boxes and mistakenly takes a box that's supposed to go to the, the regular store, takes it to the, to the kosher Pesach store, Puts it on the shelf, and next thing you know, everyone's buying that. Just before the share started, I was with Avram Eliezer. So I said, your father get any of these types of shilohs? He says he remembers one year, someone bought a spice. Assuming the spice was kosher, assuming this was kosher lopesa, huh? they used that spice in everything they cooked. Like, you know, Mrs. Dash, everything right. should go, right. right? This is your wife's favorite spice. She puts it on everything. Cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked. And then after the bottle's empty, she goes to the next bottle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Where's the say kosher on it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And this is where we get into trouble. So today's share, I come to address the issues of mixing in chamed sticker products into your Pesach cooking, which unfortunately is more common than we think. 
And it's an important topic. And uh, Be'ez Hashem, we'll go through it. It will find some heterim that people don't know. People take deep breath. And uh, we'll go from there. So firstly, the background. So the Shulchan Aruch talks about this in Simon Tov Mem Zayin. Dini Taruvitz Chametz Betocha Pesach. The halachas of mixtures of chametz on Pesach. So Mechaber writes, Chametz Pesach, as Aser taruvoso, a mixture is aser. Bein b'mino, bein shelo b'mino. Whether you're dealing with a mixture or you're mixing the same thing together or you're mixing different items together. It is aser, chametz b'pesach is aser, b'mashahu, afila b'hana. It's aser any amount. Normally we say, during the year, Right? You have a little bit of drop of milk, right? Your wife's cooking a big cholent, having a big kiddish, and you know how kitchens get, you know, to be quite dairy. busy. Is it dairy? Right? <laughs> Alan, your grandkid's running through the kitchen. All of a sudden, his, the bottle goes flying in the air, and a drop of that bottle falls into the big cholent. Your wife gets so nervous. Oh, no, what's going to be? <laughs> the bottle went flying across the kitchen and milk fell in the chomp. Now let's say I make it even more gishmak. The bottle itself fell in the chomp. So you take out the bottle, but it leaked a little bit into your cholent. Well, during the year, that's not a big deal. Because even if it leaked a little bit into your cholent, if you have 60 times the amount of cholent to bottle drip, then you're okay. That's classic bittel b'shitzim. And, okay, if you can know the spot that uh, where it fell, fine. But you have a nice liquidy cholent and there's no spot you can find that got mixed into the whole thing. Your cholent might taste a little bit more buttery this week. No, it won't. That's the idea of bittel It's not butter. And <laughs> you're allowed to have it. That will be okay. Deep breath. The thing is, though, when it comes to Pesach, the first thing the Mechaber tells us is chametz is worse than pig. If a drop of pig fell into your cholent, a drop of milk fell into your cholent, a drop of chametz, it's over. It's over. <laughs> we'll see. But the Mechaber says chametz is aser b'mashahu. And this is why now we understand why women can be so nervous about chametz, scariest, you know, substance on earth, chametz. Any drop of chametz that get, would get mixed into something, that would be awesome. Pasha shot. So we have big problems. Now, firstly, we should understand, where is the basis of this halacha of chametz aser b'mashu? Where does that come from? What's the reason for it? So if you look inside your, uh, the Mishaburu there, Chametz B'Pesach, he summarizes a nice machlok as we shown him. And he says like this, Chametz B'Pesach, Midiraisa havi Chametz kishari Yisurim. Really, if it was up to the Torah, Chametz is like all other Yisurim, Shin is Arvu, they get mixed together, She'ena no Surim Taruvosim, that their mixture is not Aser, El G'day Litein Tam B'Taruvos. Only in the case of where that thing, that substance got mixed in, adds taste. The Hainu Achishin, that we say up until 60, 160th, it would add taste. So, really, Midoraisa, the same way you're Mavato that pig, same way you're Mavato that milk in the Cholent, you could also be Mavato Chametz. What comes along the rabbis, Ella Shech Chamimich Mirubo, the rabbis are Machmer, or why? Even the isbe kares. Firstly, chametz does have a pretty severe punishment of kares. And additionally, a very important point is chametz is something we're used to. It's not like pig. It's not like milk and meat. Chametz you're allowed to have all year round. So the rabbis were smart and they realized if we don't put fences, if we are not machmer on the isr chametz, people are going to come to be makel. 
And we have to know people's psychology. Right? Remember, um, it just hit me what we talked about last week, where Moshe Feinstein was so nervous. If you're going to put on tefillin before alos and not make a bracha, you're going to come to the mazals of the mitzvah. So he figured out a way of how we should make brachas even early before the zman, potentially on, on tefillin. Our rabbanim are always ha- trying to figure out what are the ramifications that people are going to have in terms of the way they look at these Yisurim. So similarly with Chametz and Pesach. Chametz is mutter all year round. There's nothing wrong with a good bagel, a good donut, come Sunday morning. But I warn again, Josh just walked in. Josh, yes, sir. make sure your marmakomos are Chametz free. You're going to need these on Pesach. Okay. okay. Separate the donuts, the bagels from the marmakomos. I, I have them in, in the WhatsApp. Okay, sure. <laughs> He's going to print out a second copy. <laughs> Smart man. But <clears throat> you see from here, the rabbis were so nervous about chametz. They said any amount of chametz, a mashu, literally any amount, is usher. And we're doing that because this is the only way that people are going to separate themselves from chametz. Otherwise, chametz, eh, Nishka Feralach, exactly. Yeah. And meanwhile, it's, it's a Kares, and bad things can happen. So the rabbis, reason number one, the rabbis went out of their way to Asr Chametz like no other Isser in the Torah. Secondly, they bring down, uh, by the way, that first Shita is Rashi Shita, from Sachem. The Yeshom, and there's another Shita, I believe the Rambam goes like this. Mishum Da'avi Davr Sheyeshbo Matirin, Achar Pesach. It's an interesting idea when it comes to Bittal, you could only be involved or something which is always also. But something which is going to be mutter, the whole concept of bittel, which is viewed as a bidiyeved, as, a, as an important idea of when the person is stuck to deal with things, we don't want you, you know, dropping, you know, little drops of milk into your chalm. We don't want that. And also in Chachila, you're never allowed to do these things. These are terim, only a terim once it happened, Okay, you can deal with it. Obviously, you can't go and say, you know what, let's spice it up. It'll be a good topic come Shabbos morning and have the guests over. I tell everybody, you know, I have some milk in this chunk. Don't worry. Everyone's face turns red. Don't worry. It's Bittal Bashishim. No, you can't do these things. If it happens, then you could still serve it. You could still tell the story. But Dover Shadyeshul Matirin says, that if something is going to be mutter later, then we don't allow bittel today. Why be mavatel something today if tomorrow it's going to be mutter? That concept, they say, applies to chametz too. Since chametz is going to be mutter after Pesach, there's no heter of bittel on chametz on Pesach. Is that still relevant since this chametz is sitting here, it's mine, and that's a problem forever? Yeah, yeah. Good point, right? The, the problem of chametz being also forever, that's a dinder abanan. Chametz sha'avar lava pasach. The idea that that thing is also, that's only uh, an isidur abanan. Uh-huh. But yeah, when we're talking davashish we're talking classical Torah heter. So that heter will come once Pesach is finished. Pizza will be mutter again. So therefore, <laughs> on Pesach, uh, we say you cannot utilize Bithel. So if we stop the shear right here, we have big problems. If your wife mixes in that spice, which she thought was kosher lopesa, it was on the shelf with everything else which was kosher lopesa. Like, hello, and that's her magic spice. It goes into everything she cooks. Let's build up the case even more. Right? Your wife is not just doing cooking for your family, no matter how big it is. Remember those pictures Alan had of a beautiful family Seder? Cartoon pictures, right? So many people together at a table. I'm not even talking your family Seder. <clears throat> this woman, she's selling cookies to half the Jews in Orlando. And that's a lot of cookies. Right? Mass producing, you know, $10 a box, $20 a box of cookies. Talk about half some Aruba, a big loss. And <clears throat> what did she do? She had these 
she bought a whole case of cooking spray from a nice gourmet kosher Heimisha place in New York. Got it shipped down. After she finishes the last spray, she looks at them and like, doesn't say any kosher lupesa. She cooked, she sprayed down in all the cookie trays <clears throat> on the thousands of cookies she made. Rabbi, that's we're probably we're, no worse than kidneys. We're oh. assuming that this is comets, gomer, and not kidneys. Oh, so what I'm kidneys. injecting is, that's why I p- picked the case of cooking spray. Corn oil. Because I checked with my uh, bakers, and many times cooking spray has yeah, wheat in it, there's yeah. dough in it. Mm-hmm. Right. So you spray that cookie sheet with cooking spray, posh of shot, right? And there may not be a lot of chametz there, but pastas, that's what you call mashu. You spray that down, and cookies and cookies and cookies. So that would be a problem sim- simply by just reading the mechaber over here. Chametz and Pesach is also the mashu. You have that cooking spray. You have that spice that you use in all these things. You cooked, you baked. Now you have a big problem. Now seemingly they're all bad for Pesach. What can we do? So I have here today three potential avenues of Heter. The fact that there are avenues of Heter should make everyone a little more calm. And I think the first of them is the most important. And really, that's part of the reason I gave this whole share is just for this first part. I think it's so, so important. It's a very clear distinction, and it solves a lot, a lot of problems. I still remember a story. I was driving to my parents' house for Pesach, where my wife was on the phone with her, someone in her family, and she heard of an aunt who was momish, having heart palpitations, so scary, but like, also this type of thing. It's, it's Erev Pesach, there's no time to go back. You can't go to the store, if you messed up on your cooking, buy something else, you know. The store w- w- was empty for the past two days over here. But <clears throat> there's no turning back, you cooked everything. It's hours before Yontif, what do you do now? So comes in the Machaber Sif Dalit to save the day. In this Areva Chametz Kodem Pesach, if the Chametz got mixed in before Pesach, which are many cases, <clears throat> because you're cooking a lot before Pesach. What I'm about to say doesn't apply for cooking on Pesach. But if you cooked before Pesach, in this Ariva Chametz Kodem Pesach, if you cook before Pesach and the Chametz got mixed in, in this battle the Shishim, and there was a bit of sixty percent against it, Eino Chuz of Inir be Pesach la Asa be Mashahu, it does not have any problem on Pesach of being Aser be Mashahu. Wow, that's the save. So, so this ho- timing instead of the object. Yes. The most important question when your wife tells you I have a big problem. I mixed in this cooking spray. I mixed in this spice with something I cooked for Pesach. What do we do now? Time out. When did you cook it? Timing is everything. Is it cooking or applying? Huh? When did you spritz it? Before Pesach. But you didn't cook it until after Pesach. Good point. We'll get there. Right? Pashib shot. Right? If this was done, the cooking, even the preparing, before Pesach, there is room to be matter. Now, I don't want to dash everyone's uh, hopes. Ooh. The next couple words of the Mechaber, the Yesh Kolkin. There are those that argue. Now, I, that's me. This right here, off the bat, the whole concept of Bittel B'Shishim still applies up until, we'll see in a moment, 
up until Pesach. Bittul Mashishim is year round. The only time Bittul Mashishim falls off is when Pesach begins. Then we say Chametz is also the Masha. It's a great, great, great leniency. It starts earlier in, earlier in the day, though. Oh, so let me throw you a Mishnah Brewer, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Kodem Pesach, it's Mutter. Afilo Acher Sheish. Even after six hours into the day. We get you a full actor until nightfall. This is Gavaldic. This is Gavaldic. <laughs> right? <laughs> Rabosai, your wives will appreciate this. This, you mamish are Superman with this actor. Right? If things prepared, something gets mixed in, now you have to know the ratio. If the ratio was, and don't ask me how to figure out the ratio. <laughs> You know, you have to know, you have to start asking, how much this, this is when you call the rabbi frantically. <laughs> Come down, okay, how, how much is in the pot? You know, tell me what the pot, how big the pot is, okay? If we start pulling out your uh, also calculus. How much of the questionable ingredient was actual coming. Right, right. So, yes. it gets easier. Yes. But... When you have things mixed in before Pesach, the first opinion here in the Shulchan Aruch is you're good to go. Bittu B'Shishim still applies up until nightfall. That's a huge save. However, V'yesh Cholkim, there are those that argue. I did not have a chance to check up with my Sephardi brethren. What do they paskin in this situation? But well, they have their rice, they have their lafa. <clears throat> but check out the Ramah. The Ramah, the Ashkenazim save the day. The Ramah writes, V'noagim kisvara harishona. We go like the first opinion. Ah, oh, proud to be Ashkenazi. Right? V'chol taruvos shulach balach. Any mixture which is liquid with liquid, I, those type of mixtures, it's good. Now, cooking spray is a liquid, right? It's not... Uh, it can't be that you deliberately... Right, no, I can't, right, again, yeah. not deliberately. No. Now, my spices, you're right, spices might be a little trickier. What are spices? The, the Ramal is only giving you this hetter easily by what things? He says, Neil B'dava Yavish is Arev. Something dry that gets mixed in. You have bread that fell into some wine. Even though you took away the bread, also for Pesach, but still afraid on Pesach. We are afraid of little crumbs that might have fallen off and they could give a taste, then you got problems. So I, I want to back off for a second from that spice case. That spice case makes me nervous for two reasons. Number one, I'm not sure it would be classified as a lach. It might be more some considered something dry, spices. Spices innately are dry. And also it's something, the whole nature of spices is it gives a tongue. I get, that gets trickier. So mixing up the spices... Okay, you have to ask your local room. Not so simple. But let's go back to my cooking spray case. You used chametz of cooking spray on your cookie sheets, right? On your <clears throat> everything you cook, right? Use those sprays. So if it was done before Pesach, you're okay, according to the Macha, according to. Ashkenazic tradition, if you're in the Machaber world, he brings the Machlokas. To check your Loki's Sephardic Rav, which way do they go in the Machlokas? Now, <coughs> so, Lachora, if we stopped here, we're pretty good. Right, we changed mom's the whole perspective. The most important question to ask when 
someone tells you that uh, I, had, I bought something not kosher, not kosher in Pesach, I got mixed in, first question you ask, when did it get mixed in? Before Pesach or after Pesach? If it got mixed in before Pesach... After Pesach, uh, After Pesach, you have problems. No, after Pesach started. After Pesach started, you have problems. But before Pesach started, even after the six hours into the day where already you can't eat chametz, you're still okay. You still get this halacha of bitl b'shishim. still applies, and you have 60 times that amount, which you seemingly will have, you know, if the little chametz falls into your cholom pot, falls into, for sure, assuming it's more wet than dry, then you'd be okay. Now, what the Mechaber throws in this other line, that it wouldn't be choser veneer even if you cook it. In other words, what's tricky is it was mevatel b'shishim before Pesach. I prepared it before Pesach. But now I'm putting it in the oven on Pesach. So there potentially, that's going to run you into problems. Granted it was bitl b'shishim before Pesach. But now when I put it into the oven, that rehashes the whole situation. Now I'm heating it. Something's changing to this object. So that's where the Mechaber says a chiddush. Even though you're now cooking it. And one might think, granted beforehand, we were able to be about it before Pesach. But you didn't eat before Pesach. You're eating it now. You're, you're warming it up now. So maybe this should restart the whole situation again. And now it's mixing into this heat, into this food item that I'm warming up Chametz is mixing in, and it's mixing in, I'm talking now, I'm, I'm heating it up on Pesach night, so maybe now it should be a problem. To that, the Mechaber says, no, we have a heter even there. Mamash Harvey's case, you prepared it before Pesach, and now I'm warming it up on Pesach. One might think that's now a new Shiloh, because Grendel was involved before Pesach, but now... It's, you're rehashing all the juices. They're all mixing together now. So maybe now should be a problem. To that, the Mechaber says, oh, chinesh, no. There's no problem of chose veneer. There's no problem of rehashing this whole issue. Once it's bottle, it stays bottle for wet mixtures at least, and therefore everything is good. So you prepare all these cookies before Pesach, and you only bake them on Pesach, you'll be okay. Yes. So it's Yom Tov you're allowed to cook, and we say there's no bishul after bishul on a typical Shabbos. Okay. So why wouldn't that apply here? If it's cooked beforehand, then all you're doing is warming up. Okay. You're just um, <coughs> mixing in a few things. You're 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 over on Isser Taruvus. Okay. Hilchas Shabbos, Hilchas Chametz, Hilchas Bittel Vashishu. Oh, that's a mouthful. I actually just heard it. They say A.B. Roddenberg came out with a new song as tribute to this. I don't know, we have uh, people here from the old Jewish music scene. There was a yid named Moshe Yes, fortunately passed away recently. So uh, there's some song called Ain't No Bishel in the Klishishi. Some new song that came out. Sounds very, very interesting. I hear they have a disclaimer on the, on the, the album that, you know, please do not rely on this song, Halach Lamaisa. So that sounds like a good topic maybe to tackle after Pesach. But yeah, Bishel, and these things get complicated. So yes, we'll come back to that. So, so far, this is the big, big area to helpfully save your wives, save yourselves, save your family, save your community, save your business. If there's Bittel B'Shishim, there would be Bittel B'Shishim on something prepared, definitely cooked before Pesach, even if a little chametz got mixed in, you're okay. So this guy who put out this ad, you know, look at your products, look at your products. So I hope he went to the good rub because, you know, it could be, it's not as big a problem as you. Yeah, for sure, also mixed But uh, if his wife cooked it before Pesach, on, for sure on something lach, you're good to go. Now, potentially there are two other areas where there might be heterim. There's a very interesting Mishabura 
When the Mishabura, when the Mechaber writes, if you look back to Sifkat and Beis, when it says, Chomitz is Aser b'mashahu, he writes the following. Ve'hecha de'ika old harbeit stadim l'hakel. Let's say there's a case of where you have additional reasons to be mekel, to be lenient. Samachidin al she'iltos, we rely on the she'iltos, like a medrash. Desrile de chomitz b'pesach, there is a shita out there that we don't ask for chametz on Pesach with a mashu. Doesn't exist. There is such a shita. Halacha ma'isa. Do we pass in that way? No. Machaber brings. We pass the malacha. Chametz is aser b'mashu. Chametz is aser any amount. But there is a shita out there. That says there is no Isser of Chametz with Pesach Macho. Chametz is like every other Isser in the Torah, and it's Aser only Bashishim. So Mishabruah says, he throws in this line without any explanation, that where you have other Sodom to be Makal, you could potentially rely on a Sheltus. Now, this, this Mishabruah is probably meant for a bottom only, to know in the back of your head, if you have a real tough situation, and there are reasons to be Makal, you can rely on this. Okay, when does that come up? So I found later, there's a Shara Tzion. I didn't put this on the sheet, but Os Chaf in the Shara Tzion. Just quickly find you the case. It's a little interesting. It actually addresses what someone brought up as a question just before. The and the Chavar is talking about an interesting case. And you have these things. Let's say you shak the chicken on Pesach. You open up the inside of the chicken. Guess what was inside the chicken's mouth? Chametz. Chametz. Uh-oh. Is that a problem? And you only find this after you cook the chicken. You, you uh, roasted this chicken while inside the chicken's stomach was some chametz. So Mechaber says you got problems. Right? Once you reheat something, then it's also b'mashu. So the Ramal says, if you do a cliche ni ein lachosh. Is it a cliche ni? You don't have to worry about it. It's not the same level of heat in a secondary source. Then the first source. Okay. The Yesh Machmir Mikliche of Pesach. The Ramah has, but there are people that are Machmir. The Tovla Machmir Yatzalespo. It's good to be Machmir, especially if it's Yatzalespo, if it's burning hot, you'd have such a problem. So there. Does that wish any anymore? Huh? So this, you're waiting for that share after Pesach. Right? Ain't no bishul in the klish, like she. But he says that El Yerabba calls of the Iker Dino, the klisheni yesh lakal behef simaruba, minia simchas yantaf. By klisheni, if there's a big loss, you're cooking for half of Orlando, you're not going to have meat, chicken, on yantaf, the simchas yantaf involved. You could be mako. So the name brings, I don't know, there's, there's a pre that says, even a cliche, it's also. So there, the Chafetz Chaim writes at the end, the Prashi Yidu may oppose him, the Cholega Dika Kamat Sonam Wakel, Yish Litzari, if Dasha Shotos, it's real in the Beza, Kam Kim In a case like this, you're hawking, should I be Machmer with Shishim? What should I do? Okay, there, the Chafetz Chaim says, you know what? There is a shita out there that there's always bittel b'shishim, even on Pesach. So for that, you can rely on it. This, you need some kosiyantif, this have some maruba. So there are cases where the she'elto supplies, the Chavetz Chaim says, and it would be permissible. Okay? So that's potentially another thing to know in your back pocket, is there are potentially room to be makel with the shita of the she'eltos, that Chametz Pesach is not also Vamasha. 
Chavetz Chaim brings in the Mishabrua, he brings in the Shar Tzion, and the rabbinic discretion went to sprinkle that heter over here. And I have a third interesting uh, potential way for heter. And this I'm going to change my case one iota to make sure it's even clearer. I have a case, right? So we said, the woman's cooking with her cooking spray, right? She puts a cooking spray in everything she cooks. Before Pesach, you're good to go, right? But what happens on Pesach? You're in trouble. She's using her can of this cooking spray. First night of Pesach, she's warming up the chicken. She puts it on the tray, sprays it. Just a little bit. There's only a little bit left in that canister. And then she looks and says, oh no. Oh no. There's no kosher of Pesach symbol on it. So again, everything she made before Pesach, it's good. Even after six hours, up until... But now I'm on the night of Pesach. And there was a little bit left in the can. So I spritzed it. So I think even there we could find the heter. Perhaps. Where is this heter? I just came across a wonderful safer. Rif Steinemann, that's how, the Gedolei Ador, decided after his wife was Nifteres to put out a safer for Zechon Nishmas' his wife. A beautiful story how much his wife was dedicated to him. And uh, they went through the Holocaust, went through a lot of things, and made it to Eretz Yisrael. So he wrote a safer for Zechon Nishmas' his wife on halachos and everything he heard from the Chazanish. What's very cool about the Sefer is it has Rav Steinemann, who himself was in the Gedoli Hadar, what he heard from the Chazanish. And this entire Sefer was reviewed and edited by Rav Chaim Kanievsky and Zechot Tzadik So listen to the, what they found out, what they talk about. The bottom of your sheets. Omar, the Chazanish said, Da'karchach, you have to say, Aflashir Mashahu. <laughs> Listen to this chap. Even when we say Chametz and Pesach is Aser bin Mashahu, what's the translation of the word Mashahu? Literally, in English, we translate it as any amount. Yeshir <laughs> Koldu. There's an amount of what it means to be any amount. You could drink water from the, uh, the, 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 the Yam, the ocean, the seas, on Pesach. You're not afraid of an iota of Chamech there. Amazing idea. Right? You know, everything is about Shirim, right, in Halacha. Right? You have to have this amount of your share, you know, your kos for, for Pesach. You're going to have to have this amount of share of your matzah on Pesach. This amount of share of marer. And we measure things. So we've been doing a whole share today on the idea that Chavetz of Pesach is also be mashu. Mashu, literally, we translate any amount. So uh, <laughs> conventional understanding is any drop of chametz mixed in Donsky. It's over. Dunsky. Comes along the Chazanish of Chaim Kanievsky, and they say they heard from the Chaz- they, the of Steinemann and the Chazan and, and the Chaim Kanievsky say that they heard from the Chazanish, there's room to be makel. A mashahu is a shear. There's something less than a mashahu. An iota. A tiny drop. You love this, no? <laughs> and if there's an iota of chametz, that's bottle. What's an iota? I think the case I gave is an iota. You have a little spritz in your spritz can, which, as was pointed out, how much wheat is in that spritz, in the spritz can, right? For those who don't understand what the word spritz means, too bad. Spray. Right? Spray. You. Right? You have mamish... A drop. Listen to when Zadie was young. Right? <laughs> I, I want the spritz. Right? A drop of a spritz. 
that's chametz that gets mixed in, that's not the din of chametz also for mashu. You have a big ocean. There's a drop, you know, <laughs> some people throw their chametz into the ocean. Great, how am I going to drink water? They're messing up our reservoirs. Right? The cold mo, you know, they, they, they throw their stuff there. Polluted. Right? So, so Chaim Karayevsky says even, he says, He says, even a mashu is a share, a set amount, and therefore there could be something less than a mashu. So there are certain cases where your wife's going to say, oh my gosh, I dropped the tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny drop, the tiny, tiny, the speck of chametz that you're finding on your floor that somehow ends up mixed in with everything else, that may not even be the din of chametz also for mashu, that might be mutter unto itself, Based on the Chazanish, based on Roshan, and based on Chaim Kanievsky. So, I'll end off today's share. I, I saw a uh, a good comic. A good comic deserves to be repeated. <clears throat> I had a picture of a husband and wife, and the husband's trying to tell the wife, you know, if it goes so crazy with the cleaning before Pesach, it's not spring cleaning. You have to, you know clean areas where you think chametz might be, and areas where chametz doesn't have to be, and this, behind you have to move out the fridge, and this, and... Uh, and the husband and wife are just having this, you know, sikh sikh. And the husband says, you know, I think it's best. Well, let me bring you to the Rav. We should talk to the Rav about it. They go to the Rav, and the Rav says exactly what the husband was saying, that, yeah, you don't have to go so crazy, it's not spring cleaning, this... So after, <laughs> you know, the wife says his part, the husband's sitting there grinning from cheek to cheek. The wife turns to the Rav and says, but tell me, what does your wife do for Pesach? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you look into the kitchen. She's pulling out the refrigerator. She's going in. He says, it maybe helps a little bit. So look. There is reason to be nervous for the little bits of chametz. Chametz is also b'mashehu. But the little, little bits of Chaim Kadiyevsky would say, don't worry about it. And, you know, the Iker is to have shalom bias, and the Iker is to help out. I'm talking to myself here. And Vez Hashem, we should all be zolcha to free our houses from chametz. We shouldn't buy products that will give us any headaches. But if we have an issue, I think today we're better prepared to deal with it than before. Thank you very much for listening. The Robonim are starting to say that the Pipcom is that.